everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Link Live. We're so excited for you to join us today. Happy New Year. My name is Marina Mayer, Editor-in-Chief of Food Logistics and Supply and Demand Chain Executive. And I'm here with my crew who I've not seen in two weeks. I'm so excited. We are reunited. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Brielle Jacob. I'm the Associate Editor. And I am McKenna Morales, and I am the Assistant Editor. And for those of you that are new to watching us, this is Link Live. This is our weekly every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Central newscast where we bring on industry experts to talk about industry trends um, impacting the supply chain and logistics uh, industry. But today it's just us, lucky you guys. And today we're going to be talking about 2021 predictions for the supply chain industry because what better time to talk about that than right after the new year. So before we kind of get started, I wanted to kind of go over some housekeeping items. Um, I have to throw in a plug for myself. Today is my one year anniversary of joining Food Logistics. I'm so excited. So thank you everybody for making my first year very memorable. <laughs> um, Food Logistics November and December issue, including the winners to our top software and technology providers is now online at foodlogistics.com. Supply and demand chain executives December issue, including the winners from our green supply chain award is also online, sccexec.com. And registration is now open for our upcoming SEN summit, which is scheduled for later this month, covering food safety and pharma safety. And speaking of SEN summit, I just wanted to recap how fabulous our Future of Supply Chains Week was in December because it brought over 3,300 registrants for the week, 741 unique leads, and a 53% attendance rate. So that was so fabulous for it being our first week-long webcast series. So if you're interested in being a part of our food safety and pharma safety, whether as a panelist, as a speaker, or as a registrant, just go to foodlogistics.com and seccexec.com. Now, predictions. Um, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that technology is kind of the biggest prediction of 2021. And it kind of took over 2020. Um, what do you think, Real? You've written a lot about some of our technologies in the supply chain. What are your thoughts? So it's no surprise that people are going to be more interested in automation and 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 things that can uh, allow people to be remote because of the virus. Um, so that's obviously on everyone's mind. Um, but I think the number one thing about the future is that it's so unknown right now because of where things are. I mean, every interview I've done, no one could really give a clear um, answer because on um, what the future is going to look like because we don't know where the virus stands. The vaccine is coming out now. and um, and the economy is up in the air, so it, it, it's really people don't know if there's going to be, there could be a whole splurge of investment into these automation processes, or people could be holding back because they're super nervous about, you know, where the economy is going to go. So it's really 2021 is going to be um, it, it, interesting for sure. Yeah, I agree. And and for those, if you go to our editorial calendars, we cover a lot of those technologies more in depth throughout the year, like robotics and Internet of Things. And and the impact that technology has had at such a pivotal time when, you know, this virus has upended supply chains, it's displaced employees. I mean, and it's the automation part of that has been able to, um, you know, for those companies that have implemented it in time, we're able to kind of recover a little bit quicker and still do their jobs and still produce food and pharmaceuticals and everything in a safer, more efficient manner. So um, it's just from where I sit, it's been crazy to see how fast track this technology has has kind of developed and been deployed. Um, and so that's been super exciting. McKenna, I know from where you sit, you cover a lot of the professional development side, and I consider that to be also a very big trend for 2021 is the continued education. Um, from where you sit, what are some of the, your thoughts on that? So I like fully believe that we will go into another lockdown. I don't know. But like, I'm in I'm, Illinois, so we, we kind of just been in lockdown for a while. <laughs> Like, I've been in my own personal lockdown, but I would not be surprised that when the new administration comes in at the end of the month, if that's one of the first things they do is put us on a whole new lockdown because the UK is in a six week lockdown. Right. Now. And so that is what I'm predicting. I don't know if it will be as strict 
or as scary as the first one. But I think because of that, everybody will have to work remote again. And I don't think this will delay people, companies in hiring new people anymore. I think we've been in this long enough that they see the benefits of virtual working or working from home because that's what we're doing right now. So we know that people are capable of it. And then, especially as more supply chain programs get implemented in universities across the country, it's only going to grow and it, companies are only going to grow their confidence in hiring remote workers. Right. And I think that's so key. And that's a good point that, that companies may not be hiring as much because, you know, with the implementation, implementation of technology that allows them to not have to do that. But also because a lot more people are trying to figure out how to do their jobs better, more remote, smarter, and it's it's kind of forced these companies to evaluate how they do business. I know um, our January cover story on food logistics covers warehouse automation, and that's one of the big things we're talking about is how are these companies handling their employees as more technology comes into the warehouse. So, um, right. so that's and the supply chain is very fortunate right now because there are many industries where people haven't been able to go back to work and they're permanently laid off and we're hiring people. Right. Right. Except there's still a driver shortage. <laughs> True. <laughs> Which we will cover that later in another link live because we have lots of organizations that are going to uh, come on with us and, and talk about the driver shortage and kind of how to curtail it. So, um, or at least you, try to. Sorry, do you think that the driver shortage will get worse this year or do you think it'll get a little bit better because people are looking for jobs? I think that's a good question. I, I kind of go back and forth depending on the day. And I think I do that because you know, there's still that negative, I won't say negative connotation, but there's still that connotation that truck driving is just, you know, it's long hours on the road. It's just truck driving. And when we talk to, when we bring on these trucking associations, um, you know, whether it be Natri or ATA or whoever it is that we've brought on in the past, and they talk about, you know, there's more to, to truck driving than just that. There's all these technologies that help these drivers become safer um, and do their jobs easier. I think the lockdown was hard on the drivers because it, it closed down rest stops. It closed down certain roads um, that couldn't be you know fixed or whatever the case is. And when DMVs closed, it, it, it kind of prevented those drivers who didn't have updated licenses to be removed from the road. So I think it's kind of like it depends on what happens. Um, if there is another lockdown that happens, I think it kind of depends on that. Um, it's, that's a good question. I'm interested to people watching what your thoughts are. You can comment at any time and we will address it. Um, but that is a very good question. So I think that to watch. That Some and more your housing, and I think, will have like a resurgence this year. Yeah, a lot of experts are saying because of the virus that people are now scared not to have an essential job. So they're looking for things like driving and warehouse work um, for an essential job. Right. Yeah, it's, and there's a lot of good companies out there. It's not just the associations. It's a lot of these three PLs. They're they're really trying to find good drivers, and as they're shipments, you know, food service has become a different kind of a shipment player, you know, you feed us, you know, e-commerce just blew up. So they need drivers. Um, I see our poor FedEx guy, he's in our neighborhood like four times a day. And that's never been like that. It's one and done. <laughs> He'd be gone. And now I feel like I'm waving to him all the time. Right. So, uh, so you what? I feel so bad for them because well, just think of the holidays and how when the pandemic first started, they said that it was like Black Friday times three. Yeah. The beginning. And so with the holiday season on top of that, it was like 200% growth for every personal carrier. Because like, I can't remember the, that was on SCCE, but it's on SCCE for sure. But they said you need to think of it this way. If you were ordering packages two times a week and 
up to four, that's 100% growth. And then your neighbor down the street who never ordered something that is now getting packages two times, that's another right. 50% growth. They work so hard. I know. I know. It is It is hard. And I do feel bad from their they're kind of buried, but you know, it, they are essential jobs and there's tons of essential jobs out there. Um, mm -hmm. that, you know, with technology have become a little bit easier and safer and, um, more efficient. So hopefully, hopefully we can get that figured out and hopefully we don't go on under the lockdown where it kind of upends that a little bit. I know in my notes, I also had, uh, sustainability. I know we talked about sustainability a lot last year. And I think a lot of it's because I went into, the whole COVID thing, thinking sustainability would just be fall through the cracks. And it was like everything opposite. Every single company was like, it does not matter what's going on with this virus. We are going to continue to be sustainable and promote sustainability and, and, and have sustainability efforts in place. And I think that's just a true testament to our industry because, you know, regardless of what's going on, they still want to do things for the greater good of the environment. And I think that that's huge. I know, Brielle, you cover sustainability a lot. We had our um, sustainability cover yeah, story so in December. Go. <laughs> Sorry, I was frozen. <laughs> um, so what I learned uh, doing research for the uh, cover story is that the, the main thing that happened, so we all thought that um, there was two kind of things that happened. We thought that that when everything shut down, we would see, you know, effects of climate change kind of um, go down a little bit because we weren't on the move as much, all these other things. But then also regulations kind of relax because we didn't want to have that in-person interaction. So people like the FDA and, you know, government agencies that would come on site and do audits, they relaxed their rules a little bit because they wanted to make sure that we ha ha they had social distancing in place. But then the companies themselves stepped up and they decided, you know, we're not going to slap on sustainability. Because sustainability is, it, is everything. It's not just um, environmentally friendly practices. It's just keeping your business sustainable for the long term and environmental practices go into that. You know, battery operated things are, are a much, are, are a way to save money in the long run. There, and then there's plenty of sustainable options that have helped keep things moving in, in the pandemic. So it's just, there's so many layers to it. Um, it didn't, there wasn't like a clear picture of exactly what was going to happen with sustainability when the pandemic hit. Right. I saw a tweet at the beginning of the pandemic that said that this was directly related to climate change. And I'm not a scientist, so I can't <laughs> say if that's true or not. But then, because I was like you, Marina, I thought people were just going to like, kind of kick sustainability to the side this year, but it's just such a big deal. And it always come back to it that like, we have to be great, we have to save the earth. And it, I think about that tweet a lot. Yeah. So I have an interesting fact about this that, that goes with food logistics. So back when the Black Plague was happening, um, you know, the Black okay. Death, the, the big one. Um, they actually have seen in historical documents right. that, the big one. <laughs> that, as opposed to the medium sized one. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Um, that that happened when that happened, climate change stalled for a little bit. So climate change has been going on for years and it is directly affected. Um, by food actually because people were so over farming that when the the plague happened and so many people died and there was less need for so much food that um, it helped it changed the atmosphere and, um, um, things in climate change and i think that's so interesting how all these things are in effect something as simple back in the day when there was no technology no cars i mean there's nothing <coughs> farming was enough to affect that so everything is connected and i think it's it's so interesting and supply chains are 
such a huge part of everything about our culture. Well, remember when lockdown first started and people would do those like feel good posts of like the smog in California has lifted and we can yeah. find the LA skyline. So like, yeah, it is directed towards yeah. each other. I mean, just, uh, just fuel emissions alone in the air from less cars on the road. Um, yeah. I remember we, we posted something about that or maybe we talked about it, I can't remember. Just something as simple as that over a two to three month period um, can undo a lot of a lot of that damage, and you know it's just interesting to see you know sustainability continue to be top of mind regardless of what's going on. So that was on my list. The other thing on my list was something to look forward to this year is obviously uh, vaccine distribution. Brielle, you're going to be writing an article for STCE in our March issue on pharmaceutical supply chain. And then obviously we have our pharma supply chain um, or pharma safety SCN summit topic. But what are some things, preliminary things that you're kind of seeing on your end, kind of tease the article or let us know what's going on? So, yeah, so I'm working on an article for state of uh, the pharma industry right now, and it's going to be. Um, I do give an article because it just comes smack dab in the middle of this vaccine launch, which is interesting because when we had scheduled the story, there was no vaccine. I mean, we worked, we worked on our we work on our schedule a year in advance, so uh -huh. it's pretty um, mind blowing that this is happening right now. Um, I already have a podcast out about how blockchain is um, being used in the vaccine distribution. So that will be, um, so you can check that out. It's super interesting. Um, it's just, it's, it, there's a way technology is really changing the way these things are being released. Um, so this vaccine launch is, is way different, obviously, than any other vaccine launched in the past. First of all, it was developed so fast, uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Welcome to Late Night, everybody. Brielle's dog like to be included in the conversation. Both my dogs lifted their heads. They're like, what's going on? <laughs> my dogs are fortunately asleep. Usually they hear the dogs. I forgot to introduce <laughs> on the pillow. In the oh. beginning, I just now realized because yeah. you're covered behind our logo, which look at our <laughs> logo, people. <laughs> Shout out to our art director on that one. Okay, Brielle, sorry, you can continue. Sorry, my mailman came and I'm usually in the other room, but my internet. It happens. Um, so. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're on all of our traditions from 2020 to 2021. <laughs> I mean, it's been 20 minutes. For those of you who have not seen our bloopers reel, make sure you go to facebook.com and sccdirect.com and check out our bloopers reel that then we kind of put together from last year from all of our link lives because it just video interviews in general and, and those podcasts because it's definitely a hoot. And yes, I said hoot. <laughs> Bad mom jokes. Okay, continue. <laughs> People talking on now. They're like, "What is this?" We're talking about twenty-one predictions. I had the right one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> State of pharmaceutical supply chain. What else do you have to add? Um, you have a role too. I know. <laughs> Um, basically, this the way that this vaccine was created is different than vaccines in the past. Um, there's a little debate on that, but I will just say that um, the technology was already being built before COVID even happened. So they're just building on that technology specific to COVID. But then it's also going to be released and um, delivered through the supply chain in, an, in a new way as well, um, just because have modern ways of doing things now. So um, it's just right. um, very different um, than the past. Um, so I know that makes people nervous, um, but we'll see. Oh my gosh, goes. sorry. <laughs> Wisconsin was in the news because of that. Yes. <laughs> I don't agree with it. Yeah, but like also shout out to Dolly Parton 
for helping fund the vaccine. Yes. Did you guys see oh, that? Yeah. Did you see that article that was floating around right before the holiday break about how Dippin' Dots is gonna like help distribute the vaccine or like they're gonna they're gonna save us all? And people kept on making jokes that they really were the ice cream of the future. But really oh my God. But, but really the article was just talking about the cold chain and that right, right. Dippin' Dots has that technology. Right. Well, that was going to be my next thing. I was going to add on to, to Brielle, what Brielle was saying. Like, you know, we cover the cold chain across across the board in food and pharma on both publications. And I think it's interesting because people that I've talked to are like, hey, we have the capacity to help move it. We want to get some, you know, not want some skin in the game, but like we can help. And they have the infrastructure in place. They already have the trailers in place, um, the storage and everything. And I think that will be really cool to watch those two industries kind of converge together to mm -hmm. deliver the vaccine. Cause some of these food guys are even like, I can just make space, you know? So you have, you know, the produce and your cheese, and then you got your, your, your vaccines. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a one-stop shop, but I mean, it's really cool to watch. And I think that that's where I sit. You know, I started right before the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and I watched the industry kind of evolve into its own and it's never failed to help each other. And I think that that is the big takeaway from our supply chain industry because they just continue to step up and say, hey, I'll help, I'll figure it out. I have the infrastructure, it's not what I normally do, but I'll help. So I just think that's kind of cool and it'd be cool to watch. So keep an eye out for Brielle's article in the March issue of SDCE. Um, so I think that's some good predictions. If if you, those are watching, comment, bring us some predictions, and hopefully we'll be covering them throughout the year, both in print and digitally. So make sure you download our editorial calendars as well. Register for SCN Summit that's coming up. I put the link in the comments. And make sure you download Brielle's link podcast channel so that you can listen to all, all of the past year's podcasts, but she has some great themes coming up, monthly themes. Um, what are some things that you're gonna be covering? I, I'm like blinking all of a sudden, even though we just talked about this like two hours ago. <laughs> uh, right now is Spirits and Alcohol Month. Um, talking about the logistics of that. Next month will be diversity and equality. Um, and then safety. We got safety. We got sustainability. We got whole interesting tons of topics coming up. Perfect. Very, very excited. Um, we're also going to be introducing our upcoming awards next month. I'm spacing on that as well. Let me go to our, you what? It's the top green provider award for food logistics. And I don't remember what we renamed the SDCE 100, but we renamed Top supply it. chain projects. Top supply chain projects is also getting it. Yeah. It'll be that, so keep an eye out for nominations. That'll be um, open for submissions starting in February, probably about mid-February. Um, but you can always go to our website and check out the awards pages and get an idea of the actual nomination open and closed dates. So you can kind of keep a track of that. Um, and make sure you follow us on all of our social media platforms and keep an eye on us because we have lots of fun things coming up this year. And hopefully this wonderful video <laughs> montage of us just laughing is just uh, a preliminary of what's to come. Um, so thank you again, everybody, for joining us. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central, link live. Uh, we'll see you then. And thank you, everybody. Thank you both for your input today. <laughs>